Hello my dears, I have been wanting to make this video for a while but I made myself promise that I would do other educational content first but now it's here and I'm really excited. So before we explain how I dress vintage, I thought I would explain why because people often ask me and honestly it's a valid question to the person who went from this to this in the span of six months. The short answer is I like myself better this way. As a disabled person, my aesthetic is the one thing I have control over. Also, I'm less anxious about people staring at me because I've made it so that they will. So I've taken some control over that. The longer answer is one of my special interests is historical fashion, and I've more or less attempted to dress this way for my entire life. Honestly, the closest I ever got was when I was a toddler because I dressed like a Victorian child. Don't quite think that was voluntary, but I don't know why it's at all surprising that I ended up this way considering it's how I got my start. Anyway, I always wanted to dress historically and I did a really terrible job for quite some time. And then when I switched schools for high school, I got rid of every single pair of pants that I owned because I didn't like them. And I actually wrote a killer common app essay about that. So I wore skirts and dresses for all of high school and I planned to be unapologetically me fashion wise when I got to college but that is so much easier said than done. And when you're dating someone who likes you to dress a certain way, it's super easy to just mold your entire closet to their preferences, which led me to th that. But there comes a point with masking and chameleoning to other people when you hit burnout and break. And all of a sudden I didn't have a girlfriend telling me what to wear. And I realized that I actually hated my clothes. From then on, I decided that no one would dictate any piece of how I lived my life. So I redid my closet and learned to curl my hair and it's hands down the best decision I've ever made. So when it comes to advice here, I've definitely done a lot of trial and error and a lot more research than most people probably would, but I would like to acknowledge that I am comparatively new. So let's get into it. The first rule of dressing period is the hair. Well, I don't dress fully historically accurate, so it's not full period, but we're just gonna call it that. Anyway, this was the bit I was most hesitant to do because I knew it would take a lot of effort, but it really can make or break a look. Not to mention that, in my experience, the combination of vintage clothing and straight hair makes one look suspiciously like an American Girl doll. If you want hair tutorials, do let me know because I'm happy to make them. But for now, for basic sensory things, I use these curlers from Amazon, which are pretty soft, and I use Elnet Unscented Hairspray, which still has a smell, but it's not bad. Also, I associate that smell with looking the way that I want to, so that helps. It's also a lot less work than I thought it would be once I got good at it, and I actually fiddle with straight hair more than I do with my curls. And I only sleep in curlers about twice a week. Also, I wash my hair less, so I think in the long run it's actually saving me time, but I haven't done the math. Anyway, the next base thing that is a game changer is petticoats, and I did a lot of trial and error, so trust me when I say that Series Closet is the best ones. They're super soft and a great shape and give a whole new level to any look. I have three. Two are white and one is champagne, which is orange, and I will wear one or two at a time. Also, by the way, I would love to call this sensory friendly vintage on a budget, but unfortunately, if you want good quality vintage style clothing, it's not gonna be cheap. That being said, I have pieces that have been in my closet for like seven years and are still as good as new, and they are all sustainably, if not handmade. So here are some of my favorite brands in no particular order. As always, I will include the links to things in the description below. So first we have Mod Cloth. I bought stuff from them for years before I made the full switch to vintage and I really love their products. They're great quality, super sensory friendly and always have the same fit. They tend to lean more towards 60s to 80s fashion so I don't buy from them as much now but I do still get cardigans and some shirts from them. I also have a nice handful of dresses that are the 1950 silhouette which I adore though I have to be a bit more picky on what I think will fit well with a petticoat. Mod Cloth also often does crossovers with our next store collective. Collective is kind of the obvious answer when you look into vintage fashion, but I love it so much. <laughs> it's very similar to mod cloth, but mostly 40s to 60s fashion, which is obviously my preferred era of clothing. Most of my dresses, shirts, and a handful of my sweaters are from this store. I also got my winter coat and this surprisingly warm coat blazer thing that I've dubbed the Anastasia coat from there. Another brand that tends to team up with Collective and Mod Cloth is Unique Vintage, which is kind of the in-between of the two in a way. I don't get as much from them anymore, but they are also great with dresses, skirts, and sweaters, and my one pair of shorts and two pairs of pants are also from there. Hell Bunny is yet another brand that tends to overlap, and I have one or two skirts from there, but they tend to have more rockabilly style vintage, which is 
not my vibe. I tend to side more on the soft princess vintage, so it's not really my favorite, but it's the same fit and quality as the other brands. Then we go to British Retro, which I love because they only have about four or five different designs, which then they have in a bunch of patterns and colors, which is the autistic kid's dream. When it comes to skirts, they're super cozy and comfortable. And then with dresses, I have to be a bit more picky. So the plaid dresses are incredibly soft and I love them. And then the fancy off the shoulder dresses aren't 100% the most sensory friendly simply because of the whole shoulder bit, um, but they're pretty comfortable and they make me feel like a princess. So it's fully worth it. I cannot properly review this cut of dress because I bought it and it was too scratchy and I didn't wear it and I haven't bought any more, but the rest of the products are great. If you're super sensitive, Hearts and Found is your go-to store. Every piece is custom and handmade out of the literal softest cotton the world has ever seen. You can choose the length and fabric and she nails it in a wrapped box and it truly feels like Christmas. Also, my last few orders have come with matching masks. It's where I got the iconic lemon dress as well as my other favorite summer dresses and the skirts I wear most frequently. Also the yellow dress that I'm wearing right now. The store is a little more on the pricey side, but it's handmade and so, so worth it. Also fully unrelated, but 95% of the dresses and skirts I've gotten from all of these stores include pockets, which is very good news. Anyway, I also really love the seamstress of Bloomsbury, which is where I got these two lovely white shirts because the designs are just incredible, but I don't have a lot from them. So I don't feel like I can give a full sensory review. Non-vintage things that I've repurposed include sweaters from Old Navy and Kohl's. Eddie Bauer also shockingly has some great stuff that can be repurposed and it's great quality. I also get my tights and my cute PJ sets from Kohl's because they're very nice and soft. TJ Maxx also often has things that are easy to repurpose and vintage thrifting is also great. But if I don't know the brand, I want to touch it before I purchase it, which is obviously a lot harder in COVID times. So I stick to my specific brands because I know how it'll fit and I know how it will feel. Oh, also shoes. I get most of my shoes from Collective and Mod Cloth. They're pretty hit or miss um, sensory wise, but most shoes are. And then I got my snow boots from Eddie Bauer. And then I got these guys, which I call my Amelia Earhart boots from Amazon. And that my friends is the ultimate sensory friendly vintage guide. I highly recommend going vintage if you want to. I was nervous at first, but it's made me so much happier and confident in my own skin than I ever was before, except for maybe as a toddler. Anyway, thank you for watching. Let me know which one of these looks is your favorite and if there are any good stores that I missed. I hope your week is going well and I will see you in the next one.